Hey everyone, welcome back. Stacker here. In today's numismatic news and information for the 20th day of April 2023, I'd like to welcome you over to JM Bullion this morning so we can look at those live spot prices, check out the availability of those American Silver Eagles from 2023 and this, well, the premiums, the ridiculous premiums on those American Silver Eagles. All right, so next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to welcome you to join us this morning over at Stacker Talk, and that's 9 a.m. today, Eastern, 6 a.m. on the West Coast. Also, huge shout out and a big thank you to all of our channel members. Really appreciate all y'all's um, support. If you're interested, it's $1.99 a month. That's like a cup of coffee per month, right? That's really like less than seven cents per day. Now, over here to the spot prices, as you can see, everything looks pretty much flat. Gold is down 460 to 1995.75. Silver's down 8 cents to 25.11. Platinum down 1253 to 1084. And palladium up $1.62 to 1545. So, yeah, we're right about those levels, what we've been talking about for the, well, since what, about March 10? And you know what happened back in early March, yeah? Now, look at the premiums here for the American Silver Eagle. It says 4906. The best you could probably pay is 4510 if you buy a grip load right there at 1500 or more. But since I imagine most people can't drop that much, uh, you're looking at, uh, well, that premium of $23.95 and really hasn't gone too far up or down since that particular day in early March, right? Now, is it going to get better? Well, I don't think so because here's the bullion sales over here at the United States Mint. And if you can see, they've actually changed the formatting of this particular chart. It actually, um, you can see the silver totals, the platinum totals, and it looks like partially the palladium totals over here. But what's interesting, it looks like the mint has added, um, they've took out number of coins sold. I guess it's redundant since it's a one ounce. So they're just going to put one here because there used to be two totals and they were identical. Now that column is completely empty. And as you can see here, it's, there's nothing highlighted here this morning. Usually there's a highlight on everything. But uh, yeah, that's usually what it looks like. But since there's nothing this morning, it means they reformatted this whole thing except the top part and the stuff here, right? So there you go. No new tail to tail at all. And I hope that we do see some numbers for the gold. Um, I imagine if we see that number again, that will be a telltale sign of what's what. Now, let's head over here to marketwatch.com. This is the U.S. economic calendar. I don't know why I jumped. There we go. Whoops, it jumped again. You, uh, this week's major U.S. economic reports and Fed speakers. That's huge. Okay, so we know today is the 28th of February or uh, April. Time machine time. Look at this. Big day. Big day. Lots of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven reports. All at 8.30 before the market opens today. Then you got a report at 9.45 and then again at 10 o'clock. So, those are all early market reports because I think the market opens, what, 9.30 Eastern? So, yeah, within the half hour of the market opening, all reports are in. But I don't think that's really what the, um, yeah, here we go. Let's go to the next week. So, Monday is May 1st, May Day. Tuesday, May 2, and then Wednesday, May 3rd. We got right here, I've highlighted it, Federal Reserve Interest Rate Statement. Yeah, that's probably going to be the market driver. And I always think, you know, since the elections are coming up, uh, it might be a favorable maneuver for the economy so we'll see how it goes but um, you never know you never know and that's why we you know report this when we can now let's head over here to um, coin world there's an awesome article here by paul gilks dated april 27 and uh, well 2023 that is and the title of the article is legislation again seeks cost saving policy change to allow mint choice and we've talked about this before on another video about the content, uh, well, the metal content of our circulating coins and how the United States Mint is, well, possibly going to be altering that uh, content. And there's an additional article on top of this one from Numismatic News that gives a little bit more theory like I like into this um, because Paul Gilks is, it looks like, um, you know, all business about this. All right, here we go. It says here, um, legislation introduced April 26 to amend Title 31 of the United States Code dedicated to money and finance to save federal funds by congressionally authorizing changes to the composition of circulating United States coins, right? So remember back in 1982 when they went from copper or bronze, whatever you want to call them, to zinc and cents? Yeah, same, same thing could happen here. We could switch out uh, metal, right, from a valuable or more valuable metal to a less valuable metal, and something happens um, when that goes down, and it's called Grisham's Law, and I didn't put that up here, but basically the good money, uh, the valuable money, even though it's the same denomination, will be taken out of the system. Um, um, for example, all the constitutional silver, right, all those pre-65 
quarters and, and dimes. Yeah, that's Gresham's law right there. So those got siphoned out of the system. Senator Margaret Wood Hassan, Democrat out of New Hampshire, introduced uh, S-1228 in bipartisan move with Senator Jody Ernst in Iowa. The bill was referred to a Senate Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committee for further consideration. I imagine it's going to pass there as well. The bill is Hassan's third attempt to promote change in U.S. circulating coin compositions after S-4006, introduced by Hassan in June 18, 2020. And remember, the reason that didn't pass is because they were going through a lot in a short period of time. And S-4663, introduced by Hassan September 23, 2020. And again, right, they're going through a lot. We're not reported out of state Senate Banking, Housing, and Affairs Committee, to which the bills were referred to after introduction. But I think... With things going on the way they are, they want to look like they are saving money, and I think that's going to just ramrod this through. All right, Hassan noted that the U.S. Mint just released 2022 biannual report to Congress. The related article, they are related articles, I guess, um, suggests that by adjusting the metallic compositions of circulating coins, savings of $12 million to $51 million annually could be realized, right? I mean, that might not be a whole lot of money, but everything adds up, right? When it comes to fiscal responsibility, it's just common sense to use every tool at our disposal, wrote Hassan. This bill will save millions of dollars per year by modifying the composition of nickels, dimes, and quarter dollars with less expensive metals. There you go. And what does it say about an empire when they start debasing their currency? Yikes, right? I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to support, support our bipartisan bill. The Bipartisan Coin Metal Modification Authorization and Cost Savings Act that Hassan and Ernst Champion would authorize the U.S. Mint to modify the metallic composition of circulating coins in the modification if the modification would reduce costs incurred by taxpayers after uh, and allow for a seamless transition into circulation. And I would mean, I would imagine it would be a co-circulating coin, right, back in 1982, same thing, and have minimal impact on the public, you know, like vending machines and coin operator, that sort of thing. Now, an absolute nonsense, it's absolute nonsense that American taxpayers spend 10 cents just to make one nickel, Ernst wrote, only Washington lose money making money. This common sense bipartisan effort will modify the composition of certain coins to reduce costs while allowing for a seamless transition into circulation. A penny saved is not a penny borrowed. That's interesting. Now let's go to the next article here. And this is um, numismatic news. And uh, this says here, change is coming to our change, question mark. New Coin Metal Modification Authorization and Cost Savings Act is presented to Congress, creating new change in the metal content. All right. So this is by Richard Gidrejic 16 hours ago. And basically, uh, we talked about this. So I'm going to go to the should the, the theory, the theorization, the uh, having, uh, you know, an idea of what might happen if this does occur. Now, should this bill become law, collectors may see a repeat of the 1982 scenario where there were several different seemingly alike Lincoln cents to be collected due to mid-year changes in metal composition. Now, folks, what if the United States Mint also this year does not make a, a, a circulating coin set, right? Like 1982, or maybe next year, when there's too many m different metal compositions to add to the mint set. I mean, right? Wouldn't we have to start collecting on our own and maybe put together those sets on our own, like those uh, collectors back in 1982 and 83 had enough foresight to do? I would think so. Let's keep on keeping on. Now, it says here, uh, should the Mint be given this option, the results could be off-metal errors and varieties. Yes, please. Even better news, this could encourage the non-collecting public to examine their change and perhaps become collectors as well. That's huge, folks. Think about the implications here. These are tremendous. What an opportunity this really boils down to. And it is part of the great American coin renaissance that started in 1999. Wow. All right. Now, while we, wa uh, while we watch to see what Congress may or may not do, the current market conditions to draw a lot of attention from well-financed and serious collectors, as well as investors recognizing coins as an asset class, an important alternative to a very rocky stock market. Gold and silver continue to trade in a narrow range. That's right, kind of flat. Gold near the phys uh, psychological $2,000 an ounce region, and silver about $25 an ounce. Absolutely. Now, rare coins are not available for years. Uh, continue to be liquidated from older collections and are being offered at auctions. The number of bidders, I don't know why. This seems kind of disjointed and not really... Uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and leave it there. <laughs> now, this is a really great article. I'm not going to read it all, but it kind of gets the point across of what I'm trying to say about what's happening in our coins, right? So this is from Numismatic News staff, dated April 23rd, 2023. Title of this article is Collectors Greeted 1965 Washington Quarter with Scorn. And is now is that going to how is that how we are going to act when we get a metal composition change from the zinc and cents and the copper cupro nickel 
clad coinage that we're seeing today? Absolutely, right? Some of us will. Some of us will see this as an opportunity to collect. Remember the metal variety errors? I would, I would gobble up as much as possible. Now, like I said, I'm going to leave a link in the description for this article. I might do this video on Monday. There's some really great information here. Good, good stuff. Also, now, this is really important. I wanted to get to eBay. Uh, yeah, there it is. Hi. So I put 2023 Canadian nickel. Put the five there and the nickel here and the yada yada. And look, I got two results. And this was here. This is a five cents Canada 2023, but it says from the mid roll. And this one's kind of fancy. No, that's not even it, right? 2023 Canada looks like 1947 serial number out of 200. Look, I don't know what's going on here, but I can I cannot find any circulating Canadian coins. Now, has Canada stopped minting circulating coins? I was only under the impression that it was the the um, the cent that was gone from the circulating coins from Canada. Now, what's the story, Morning Glory, about the Canadian circulating coinage? Is it only going to be available from the mint now or what? Because I cannot find it. I've looked up the quarter, of uh, the 25 cents. I've looked up the five cents. I've looked up their dime. Nada. Zip. Can't find it. Now, I can find it in those uh, mint sets, but that's it. Isn't that interesting? And now, what does that say about, um, well, what if that happens here in the United States? Wow, right? What if they just say, you know what? We don't need to make any more coins. We're going digital. Yikes, right? So I would imagine these coins are going to be very valuable from the United States and maybe even Canada as well. And let me ask you a question. I've asked this before. So if you have paper money, right, and you have coin money, one has copper and nickel in it, and that seems like has some intrinsic value beyond face value, and then you have dollars made out of paper. Which one do you think is going to be worth more if you have the same face of each when it comes to intrinsic value? If the dollar does really lose its placeholder, its stake in the world, right? Yikes. Now, let's go to the plus one today. Bam! This is Proverbs 17.5. Now, we know that uh, two people got uh, fired this week from their jobs, and they were prominent people. And I th it made me think of this because I, I saw a lot of people kind of gloating and, and being happy over their misfortune. But... Uh, yeah, you might not want to do that because check this out. Uh, it says here, one who mocks a pauper insults his maker. Here we go. This is where one who rejoices in another's misfortune will not be exonerated. And uh, I believe that means someone who rejoices in another's misfortune will suffer misfortune themselves. So you just did it to yourself by doing that. So don't cast that evil eye on anybody, right? Otherwise, it gets cast back on you. And that is no fun. Now let's head over here to three nines fine. 99.9 K-O-I-N, Coin News Radio. This is Murray Head, One Night in Bangkok, the extended version, I think. Maybe, maybe not. But listen, this isn't two weeks in Bangkok. This isn't a three-day weekend. This is one night. One night in Bangkok. So there it is, folks. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you do like what you're going to see, please subscribe to the channel. It's free. Stack her out.